Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysha's here, and today we've got a little something new, something different to talk about, and it comes courtesy of my friends over at Frazetta Girls. This is a look at their brand new 112 scale Dark Wolf, based on the insane artworks of Frank Frazetta, Ralph Bakshi, and that awesome 80s movie, Fire and Ice. There's Dark Wolf all atop the mountainside, ready to just plunge that axe into somebody, right? Now, much like a NECA Toys box squared off has a little flappy to it, a little Velcro action. Now, one side of the flappy has a nice photo of the figure along with a little write-up. So if you want to screen grab this, you are more than welcome. While the other side, yeah, you'll see exactly what's in the box. The sides of the box show a nice photo of said figure along with fire and ice. And on the back side, you do get more of an idea of what you are looking at here. So step into the fantastical world, unlike anything witnessed before. And you can read up on this, along with everything that this figure will entail, along with a nice photo again of everything that is in the box. So you're not opening it up going, what's in the box? Now, here's everyone involved with the creation of this figure. So thank you very much for that. And you won't need the barcode because like I said, this is available on frazettagirls.com. It is on a bit of a wait list as of this video, but you can put your name on there and as hopefully more become available, you can certainly grab yourself one if you so choose. But in the meantime, let's see how it is. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is an early look at the brand new Frazetta Girl straight from the movie Fire and Ice, the 112 scale action figure, Dark Wolf. And while I got all you fantastical people here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you'll like. So here is everything out of the box. And I want you to keep in mind, this is a little bit of a pretty penny. Clocks in around the $70 mark, so just keep that in mind as we're looking at this figure. He does come with a bow. It's nicely done, nicely rendered. It looks like wood, I'll give him that. And it has a very taut string to it, a real string. I totally dig that. You get three arrows to go along with said bow. They're all black with a little bit of a wash to them. Gives them a little glossy kind of sheen. You also get Dark Wolf's main skull breaking weapon, his giant ax. It has nice paint for the silver, has a little bit of a wear and tear look to it, and it's extremely sharp at the tip. I'm not even joking you. Be very careful with that aspect. Now the good part is you get a ton of hands to hold said weapons, including a bow holding hand, which more on that in just a few. Fisted hands, open hands, you get the idea. Now this is one aspect I particularly like about this figure. And you don't have a bunch of extra heads, you have several interchangeable lower face portraits. One's a screaming, one's a solemn, one's a more teeth gritten head. And it's really easy. You just pop the head off and then you basically just grab the chin and just kind of give it a, a tug right there and it'll pull right out and there you go, right? You can see the little porthole right there. It's easy peasy. Cause then when you have Dark Wolf and you have the corresponding face plates that you want, it really does bring this character to life. I think that that is one aspect of this action figure they've really managed to capture Frank Frazetta's artwork. It's really cool, really well done, really well sculpted, all the musculature, and I'm not gonna be one of those that tells you like, ooh, the glute and the, uh, and the bicep, and this is, I, I don't know. But it looks like they know, and that's what's really cool, that's what stands out to me. He's a big old muscular son of a gun. Now, in terms of just displayability, he looks great, right? When you start to move him around, that's where I had some hiccups. You won't find too much of a, a problem with rotating the head, especially with all the hanging stuff. The necklace can be quite cumbersome. My thing was that it kind of bunches up within the headdress, right? It's a nice looking necklace. It's got some nice paint to it. What I did was when I took the head off, I didn't push the head all the way down onto the peg because once you do, I feel like you lose a lot of the neck, right? He doesn't really have that. That's what kind of hinders the necklace and whatnot. So I kept it kind of higher on the peg. It kind of helps, we'll just say. I think it looks a little bit better. In terms of the articulation for the shoulders 
and the arms. The arms will go all the way up. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, for the price point, I expect this thing to be articulated to the nines. Part of me will agree with you. Part of me thinks that, aesthetically speaking, you don't need a whole bunch of articulation because it suits certain people's needs, right? But in terms of a character like Dark Wolf, a more agile warrior, I would have liked to have seen Bicep Swivel. He has single joints, which does not bother me. He does twist at those single joints, so keep that in mind as well. When it comes to the wrist gauntlets, I do wish that those were a little bit of a darker color because I think it bleeds into the color of his skin too much. More of a differentiation would have been really nice, I will say that. The wrists will spin and they will rock, so plenty of movement there. You have a really good upper diaphragm slash ab crunch sort of deal, but it does get very gappy when you move him all the way back. If you're gonna do that, expect that kind of gappage, right? Nothing in the waist unless mine is just not turning, right? So I found that while he does have a waist, he gets lots of mobility in that upper diaphragm. So perhaps that that's what they were going for in the first place. Now I'm gonna show you this, so prepare yourselves at home. But yeah, he's uh, he's free balling it underneath that loincloth. <laughs> now, he doesn't have a thigh, but he will rotate right there at the crotch which does get enough rotation out of it. It just doesn't have that traditional thigh cut, which again, I don't mind. Single jointed knees, he will spin at the knee, and I totally thought that he would have something at the boot right there, but sure enough, he doesn't. But he will rock, he will go up and down in the feet, so you get lots of mobility there. Now, just to show you, in terms of putting him into a flight stand, getting him more of that battle-ready position, right? When you move him around, it does get very gappy in the diaphragm, but right here where you move his feet, you can actually see the brown flesh color bleeding into the boots. That is something I just cannot abide by. You can talk about it all day. Hey, he's got some great sculpt. He's got some great paints, all the musculature, everything else looks fantastic. But yeah, that would be my main gripe with the figure is that those don't match. It's a little gappy. I had no problems in terms of loose joints. Everything was pretty solid. In fact, I would say in the arms, when you first get him, go very easy. Might even have to heat it up. Just trust me on that. You don't want to snap anything right out of the box. In terms of holding the weapons, let's say the bow and arrow. Now, I would say while he does have limited articulation in some sense, he still holds everything, still displays everything. Although in holding the arrow, because he can't separate his fingers, it could be kind of awkward, we'll just say. Now, in other hands, you can totally slip the arrows through the fingers if you want to go that route, or you just get him the item holding hand and he can hold all the arrows because no, he does not have any weapon storage whatsoever. He's very true to the illustration by Frank Frazetta and the movie, of course. Now, in terms of just a barbarian madman holding his warrior axe, they definitely achieved that perfectly. Now, like I said, you're gonna wanna play with this. You're gonna wanna display it how you want to display it. So keep that in mind when you articulate this figure. What's showing, what's not, gaps, paint, you get the idea. But if you were just to pose this out, which I think a lot of you will, he will meet all your action figure needs in the terms of fire and ice, Dark Wolf on your shelves. But keep in mind everything that I have pointed out. In terms of how he scales, right? He's gonna be around that 6.5, just below that kind of style, right? When you look at Marvel Legends, McFarlane Toys, he is going to be on the higher price point end. So more towards Super 7, Premium DNA, and Mezco, of which this figure actually feels like, right? If I had to kind of describe it to you. He doesn't feel anything like Marvel Legends, but he does have the paint of NECA toys. So in that sense, he's kind of an amalgam of everything that's out there these days, and in a way kind of creates a new type of figure with its own original feel. So. That will wrap it up for my look at the brand new Frazetta Girls 112 scale Dark Wolf by Frank Frazetta and of course the animation Fire and Ice by Ralph Bakshi. And you've heard my thoughts and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Fire and Ice. And thank you again to my friends over Frazetta Girls for sending this out for the purposes of this video. 
And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, when it comes to the big old barbarians and all that cool 80s animation, look no further than to the artwork and animation of Ralph Bakshi and the amazing paintings of Frank Frazetta. They really have done a great job at bringing this character to life. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.